What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mastering MetaHuman. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Mesh Morpher plugin and how you can use it to create a custom mesh for your MetaHuman. To get started from here, you can go to meshmorpher.com as you see above in the URL bar. And for this tutorial, we're just going to be using the light version. So if you go ahead and click on Get Light, you'll be brought to this uh, FAQ page. If you scroll down to the licenses here, click on this. You'll be brought to this page. And if you're on Unreal Engine 5.5, which we have been using for this tutorial series, you'll want to go ahead and click on this Mesh Morpher Lite 4.3.5. If Unreal Engine 5.5 variant is no longer available, make sure that you choose the one that is right for your project. Once you have that download, you're going to want to unzip that archive file, and you're going to want to go to Edit, Plugins, Plugin Directories, and you're going to want to make sure that you have an additional plugin directory index array pointing to that location where you download the file. This should just point to the greater Mesh Morpher folder and not any specific U asset or file like that. Once you have that set up, if you go into your plugins and you search Mesh Morpher, you should see the Mesh Morpher Lite plugin. Make sure it's loaded and it might ask you to restart at this time. Once you restart, you should have this M to open the Mesh Morpher in your Unreal Editor. What I like to do is go into my content browser, select the skeletal mesh that I want to add it to. This is a skeletal mesh that was created by the MetaHuman creator. If we click that and click on the Open Mesh Morpher button, we're going to have the asset open in the new Mesh Morpher uh, UI window. All right, now that we've got the Mesh Morpher plugin open, I want to go over a few of the UI elements that you're going to be using the most. Again, this is the light version, so not all the features are available here, but I'm going to go over a few that we'll be using today. First off, over on the left is going to be your tool. Uh, this is going to be like your sculpting tool, similar to like a ZBrush, Blender, or Maya sculpting tool set where you've got the move, grab, sculpt, and a bunch of others. One of the tools you'll begin to use a lot more if you continue working with Mesh Morpher is this restore tool right here. So if you were to be sculpting the neck and let's say it breaks out of the silhouette, that might not be something that will look good later when you're blending between the morph targets. You could go ahead and grab the restore brush and sculpt that in right there and it'll just restore it to this exact pose. It's not going to be destructive, it's just gonna bring it exactly to where it once was. Which is super helpful when you're trying to maintain that blend between the original pose and the morph target. Next off, over on the right, we've got the actual morph targets. This is going to be the section where you're going to be adding, editing, and playing around with all of them here. If you right click on any of them, you could open them, add new, delete, rename, a whole bunch of options here. Uh, below that, we've got the animation curves. This is how we're going to drive these morph targets. Uh, these are the ones that are set up with MetaHuman. When you click on these, you could see the corresponding morph target respond in the window above. We go ahead and let's say do the brow raise and L. You can see the brow raise there. We do it on the right. What we could do with this is then if we had the full version, we could click poser and it would create a morph target from the pose that we created with the animation curves. This is great if you want to create a bunch of different emotions that are you know driven by six to uh, you know 20 different animation curves, which is hard to replicate. You could go ahead, adjust them all in the anim curves click poser and it'll create that mesh. It will create that morph target. If we click it now, I'll say this functionality is now available in the free version. Again, we're using the light version for today. We could go further in depth into the full version at a later time. Beyond that, we've got the toolbar at the top, which is where you're gonna have different tabs. Um, in the top left is where you're gonna select your different skeletal mesh. You could save your skeletal mesh here, toggle post processing add new morph target, delete the current selected morph target, rename them, duplicate, recompute normals, copy morph target to another skeletal mesh. This becomes really handy when you're working with only metahuman assets because they're gonna have the same topology if you started from lot zero and you didn't you know, change anything in ZBrush Blender during your sculpts. So copying morph targets from another skeletal mesh is another one that you might be using a lot if you're working with a large data set of metahumans. Then you can export morph targets to a static mesh, you can bake the morph targets into a skeletal mesh, and then you could blend different morph targets together. What we're going to be using explicitly in today's video is the create from mesh files. 
This allows us to take a sculpt or a blend shape or a morph target that we create in a separate DCC application and import it into the Mesh Morpher plugin. If you had a mesh already in Engine that's set up as a skeletal mesh, you could also use that as the base. Again, there's the Poser, Wrapper, Alembic Export, Append Mesh, Remove Mesh Data, Transfer Weights, Subdivide Mesh, and Deformer Graph, all of which I recommend that you guys check out yourselves at a later date. Now, let's jump into it. What we're going to need to do is get the skeletal mesh of this exported out to our DCC package of choice. Again, Mesh Morpher does allow you to edit and customize morph targets directly within the engine, but I'm used to a different sculpting tool set. So for today, I'm going to be using ZBrush to kind of sculpt out what I need the customized base mesh to be. If you're comfortable using it in here, you could go ahead and click add new, create a morph target, then right click, open morph target, and use the sculpting tool set on the left here. What I'm going to do for today is minimize this, open up the content browser, locate the skeletal mesh, and go ahead to asset actions and export. This is going to export the skeletal mesh with the skeleton and all the blend shapes. We don't necessarily need all that, so when you go to export, click on save, and in here you could disable the export morph targets. Go ahead and hit export. I'm going to be importing it into Maya for today. Again, it shouldn't be too long of an export because we're not importing all the different morph targets. A lot of times it's got to import hundreds of poses, which could take a very long time to load. All right, once that's imported into the scene, you should see a skeleton hierarchy with the mesh in the scene. What I'm going to do is just select the geometry here, freeze, transform, delete history, and we should be able to just click on the mesh, unparent it from the group. Make sure we zero out the transforms here once again, because we're moving it from this group that had the 90 degree offset. And we can go ahead and delete this, click on the geometry, and you could file export selection to your sculpting DCC package. If you're using it in Maya, you could just continue right in here, use the sculpting tool set, or go into Blender, Mudbox, ZBrush, whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna be exporting it over to ZBrush, doing a quick school, and I'll see you guys back in Unreal Engine. All right, once you have your sculpt set up, you're gonna go right into your skeletal mesh again, open up the Mesh Morpher plugin. You'll need to have exported your mesh from your DCC package, the morph target sculpt that you want to work from as your base mesh, as an FBX OBJ file should be fine too. And once you have that set up, go ahead and open up your Mesh Morpher of the asset you need to work in. And I'm gonna exit this one, that's a quick test I did. What you can do now is go ahead and click on Create from Mesh Files. When you click that, you're going to have this new Create from FBX window pop up in the Mesh Morpher. For the base mesh, you're going to need to select a clean geometry that represents what you see here on the screen. For me, I have that in Maya. That's this one that we removed from the skeleton and deleted the parent nodes. Um, so I saved this out as an FBX with the suffix clean. So if I go ahead and click the clean FBX here, you're gonna see a copy of this geometry pop up on the side here. Oops. Let's go back into the viewport here. And for the morphed file, what we're gonna to wanna to do is select the sculpt file. Uh, that is the one that I sculpted here in ZBrush. We go ahead and grab the FBX from that. I think I called it this one. It might appear not at origin, that's fine. You can go ahead and use these different morphed transforms if you unlock the lock transform. I think there's just a 90 degree offset here that I forgot, or a negative 90. There we go. And you should see it pop up right over here. 
you give the new morph target a name. We're gonna call this uh, target base mesh. And we could leave a lot of these other ones. We're gonna enable match by UV to make sure that interpolates the vertex positions um, based on the UV from the base mesh to the target mesh. And once that's selected, you could go ahead and click create. Might take a minute or so, flying morph target to skeletal mesh. Once it's finished, you should see a creating target base mesh to metahuman mesh morpher demo face mesh was successful. Obviously your names will differ here, but you want to make sure that there is a success message here. Once that's done, you can go ahead and hit OK. Return to your mesh morpher um, iteration of your skeletal mesh. And if you don't have anything in the search bar, you should be able to go to the bottom and see a new target base mesh. If we enable this, we should see it seamlessly deform from the original geometry to that new mesh. Now what's cool about this is it is all additive blend shapes or morph targets. This can now be the default of your skeletal mesh. Now, unfortunately, this is where the light version ends. Because if we go up to bake the morph target to the skeletal mesh up here in bake, it says bake morph targets has been moved, use poser to bake morph targets. And as we know from before, if we go ahead and click poser, this functionality is not available in the free version. Now I have reached out to the mesh morpher team uh, and requested a trial version so I could have the full version to continue this tutorial. And I was accepted for a one week trial. Uh, the license still hasn't appeared under my account, so I'm unable to continue it right now, but I'm going to upload this video as a part one, and I'll continue the rest of the tutorial next week. With that, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next week for part two. Again, keep learning, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.